Good evening, everybody. Hello. You won your bet, Malcolm Randall. It's because I was reading your comment that I was a bit late. <laughs> I looked at the thing and thought, yeah, i got a few seconds. I'm going to say something about that. And then all the time I looked at it, I was late. Thank you all for being here. It's good to see you. Absolutely amazing. Uh, forgive me a moment. I'm just going to fiddle with something as usual. Hello, 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 all you good people. It's so nice to see you. Let me just get myself sorted out while well, I know a few other... Oh, wow, the numbers are climbing fast. The people are, of course, arriving, which is great. I hope you've all had a good week. I hope everybody's well. I hope everybody's happy. Uh, apologies, I haven't been around the group much in the last week or so. I actually had eight days off. Well, mostly. Last weekend was rainy and horrible here, so I actually worked because I've got a project I need to work on. <coughs> but yeah, so hope everyone is good and well. Uh, like the parrots, David, I'm guessing you were hoping it would be a duck. I saw what you said earlier, by the way. I am watching you. Um, okay, so welcome. Thank you for coming to another challenge. Um, what did I want to talk to you about? You know, I was thinking earlier this week, photography is really all about solving problems, isn't it? I mean, obviously, we've got to learn about how cameras work and light and stuff and all the rest of it. But then there are other problems that we have to solve. We've got to choose to solve them. It's like if you really want to get into landscape and you really want to make the, the image really work, you've got to be in the right place at the right time when the light's doing what you want it to do. You know, so... Uh, that maybe means getting up at four o'clock in the morning, doing lots of research and hiking. If you want to do sports, it's about finding the best stadiums with the best light and the best viewpoints, wildlife. Boy, you've got to be patient for that, finding the habitats. Days on end of observation. It's about choosing to have those problems and enjoy solving them, I think. That is the key to all of this. Because cameras, light and composition, really, it's all just beginner's stuff, isn't it? All of it. How to control the camera, light and composition. <clears throat> it's like it's like passing your driving test for the first time. You know, you, you, you've got your license. You'll get from A to B without actually crashing. Um, but you're not really going to do it with style and panache. So if you want to do your photography driving test, do one of my online courses, guys. You know, most of you have. I know you're really... I am preaching to the converted and you're awesome, but... Anyone who's new here, perhaps, I'm sure the others will vouch for it. Um, that you know, when you've done that and, and you can understand light composition and camera, then you can start to learn to drive with style and panache, one elbow out the window, Blues Brothers style. I don't know if you guys have noticed, because I have, uh, when I was doing the judging, just you know, looking at some of some of you guys who who've been around this for a while, and it's really exciting because I noticed it's just like the change. Looking at the names and going like, oh wow, yeah, wow, sh wow, you know, this is really great. He's he's doing some really cool stuff now, and and I think it's totally amazing. <coughs> it kind of proves that cameras don't take pictures. You guys take pictures. You do an amazing job. Go back and look over some of the shots historically, and uh, I think you'll see. There's some truly beautiful use of light going on in this challenge. Uh, I am surprised, however, that no one actually came up with a spiritual thing, you know, like seeing the light, that sort of thing. But it doesn't matter. You've done a great job. I'm also very intrigued by how many of you chose to take your kit off this time. <laughs> it's some really cool stuff. <clears throat> so, why don't we get stuck into it? Because I do have to get back tonight, not too late, and I'm sure you don't want me droning on too long. Being boring because you have other things to do too. Right, let me just get my shot set up because I was too busy gas bagging. And I wasn't quite ready. Good, here we go. We are ready to rock and roll with our first in our feedback. Let's... Sorry, I forgot I need to put my little shot in the corner there or else it doesn't work. Let me, sorry guys, I'm just getting my screen set up properly. There's so many things going on on this screen. Anna, I really love this. I thought we'd start with a bang. Um, I really do. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful picture and I love the light which is catching um, the child's face. Niagara Falls, wow. Um, I've never been there. But you have done a great job. 
and I'm being hard on you because you have done a great job. And it touches on what we were talking about earlier, actually. Um, it is such a great job. I took the liberty of just brightening your shot a tiny bit. What do you think, guys? Hang on, let me just change this to a clear cut. Let's just move backwards and forwards. So here's your original, Anna. And all I did was brighten it up just a tiny, eeny little bit. And I just think it helps with that gorgeous bit of light on your child's face. It is such a beautiful shot. Um, you know, you really were in my shortlist shout outs and all the rest of it, as always. Um, but I thought, you know what, I, I'm going to put you up first because it is such a powerful pitch and it is so beautifully done. Forgive me for being a little bit harsh, but it kind of feeds back to the point. A little bit of exposure control, I think, can make, make a little bit of difference. And it's only a subtle difference, but it is great. And as always, of course, guys, I can't talk about everyone's pictures. I wish I could because there are some very powerful ones throughout this. So, you know, if your image isn't chosen to be spoken about tonight, please don't take that as a sign that it's no good. It just means there are so many. <clears throat> and I am trying to spread the love around a bit. Well, it's on the subject of exposure. Um, I really kind of like this one, Patricia, because you've got such beautiful light coming through that leaf. My feedback would be it's possibly a little bit busy, although because you've got such great light on that one leaf, it does stand out from the others. I don't know if there was a slightly different angle you could have found perhaps just to sort of give it a little bit more isolation, but I also took the liberty of just brightening yours up just a hint because I think it could stand it. I don't know if you can even see that, guys, in YouTube. Let me have a look at it on my other monitor as I do this. But I just brightened it up an eeny little bit just to see what the difference would be. Uh, I agree, Moose. It does kind of work as it is. But I just, I'm being really harsh here. I'm just pushing a little bit on this. Great shot, nonetheless. Uh, Brent. I kind of I kind of like this because I like the light and I like like the journey we've got going on. But I feel a couple of things here. It, it needs a bit of a destination. It's like we're going down through there, great. We're going towards some light, great. But then we kind of hit some iron bars. And again, I think actually you could have lifted that exposure a bit. The other thing is it's, it doesn't look to me like it's quite sharp. Um, possibly a camera shake thing. Watch out for that shutter speed. And, and it will avoid any wobble and stuff like that within your camera. But good effort. You're seeing things, and that's what's important. Another another thing here, Jeff, um, you know, you're, you are seeing things, and you have got a nice little piece of light just sort of cutting across those rivets there, which is, you know, well spotted. The only thing is I think you've got a little bit too much going on in the shot. The brightness of the sky is taking us away from those rivets. Um, I do like the pattern in the sky, but I feel the two are kind of conflicting. I think less is a bit more. I like the way you you put it together. You've been you've composed it well, and you've been very careful, making sure everything lines up. And there is a nice gentle little highlight in the middle, which you've worked well with depth of field on. I just feel there's maybe just a touch too much going on in the shot. <coughs> Now, Iggy, um, I'm going to look at it on my other monitor. Forgive me, I'm not ignoring you guys. Um, I can see what you're doing with this. You have found some nice light, but it is so dark. This shot is so dark. Um, I get it, you took it on your phone, but you know most phones you can control exposure. I don't know if you can on yours. I can just, but only just, make out the human figure down the bottom and the bright bit in the top corner is just overpowering everything it's kind of like oh it's a shot of some brightness <laughs> you've got to really work hard to see it i don't know if you've got away with that brightness i think if you could have i get it it's a phone but cropped in or moved forward a little bit and, and tilted the phone down a bit as you did it you might have been able to lose that super bright corner and then maybe the exposure would have lifted up a bit and we'd have seen more of of what your shot was about because it's really hard to see it What do we got here? We got another nice shot here, Lawrence. <clears throat> you found a nice thing and you've isolated it really well against a plain background. Great use of shallow depth of field. Um, it doesn't look quite sharp on my YouTube monitor, although it does on my 
broadcast monitor, this one here. Um, but what initially was making me look at it is I think the light is kind of coming from over your left shoulder. It's sort of slightly round this way. Um, sorry, because of the reversing of these things. Let's use my other hand. It's, it's slightly over here. And I think if you could have moved around to put the sun more behind it, the light going around the edge would have just kind of helped feather it. It would have actually made all those little seeds stand out beautifully. But it is a very well composed shot and, and you've executed it well. It's this thing about mastering light. Light is tricky old stuff. I don't know, maybe the background going the other way would have been horrible. However, maybe you could have picked the piece of grass and, and shot it, you know, in your hand. Sort of, you know, you were holding it out like this with your camera with your camera up here, a bit like I did in that video, you know? Uh, and found a place that was dark to hold it against. But well composed. <laughs> I like this one, Kevin. It's very powerful, it's very contrasty. I wonder if the contrast might have helped if it would come down a bit, because you have done a great job. You've got a nice level horizon, you put it all together. It's hard work catching an animal, isn't it? It's hard work catching a little bit of the spirit of an animal. Uh, I'm guessing this is your dog. What does it say here? He was itching to go swimming, yeah. Um, again, I think you could have probably got away with brightening it up a bit. I don't know if you're worried about the sparkly highlights on the water. Those highlights that sparkle on water, they do burn out. Don't worry about them. Um, it would be nice if there was a bit more light in there. It's a very contrasty situation. It's a difficult shot. But you caught a great moment. I really like how you've composed it. You've definitely caught a bit of doggy spirit there. Um, yeah, nice job. I just think somehow it could have been just a little bit brighter. But it is indeed, as um, Moose just said, a great perspective. Stephen, you've got a really nice bit of landscape here. I haven't read it. I don't know where it is. Um, I'm not going to read it all now. <clears throat> and I can see how you're working with the light. Days like that, skies like that, they're fantastic for landscape photography because you've got a great dramatic sky. Blue skies are boring, just blue sky, it's boring. You've got great sky and all those little light patches in between those clouds, they let highlights come through the clouds and light up bits of the landscape. You can see it doing it in your shot. The only thing is, I think it, it's kind of doing it in the distance rather than in the foreground. And we've got that big sort of empty grassy bit coming along the river. I kind of get where you're going. The thing which I'm looking at, though, is right on the corner of the frame, in the middle, left side of the frame, in the middle. It looks to me like there's a house or something on a hillside, and that is all lit up. Kind of wondering, could, could you have maybe reshot this from a slightly different angle and, and made the point of the shot being the house? I know you've got a leading line wandering through there, but I'm not sure about all that space to the right. Um, but it is a nice shot, and you have spotted some great light. Um, think how you use it with the composition. There's so many things to think about with this, isn't there? There's so many things to think about. Oh, Petro. I like this. I do like this. And I don't know why yours isn't in the shortlist shout-outs, because it was supposed to be, <laughs> but there we go. <laughs> um, I just really love it. You put it together so well by putting you know the top of the lighthouse right over the sun you've got that fantastic shadow creating a leading line um, it's putting the little ripples in the sand um, or the ground or whatever it is it is it is really nicely done it's such a simple thing and look how effective it is guys it's like using the shadow itself it's so simple, isn't it? That's not rocket science. What it is, is being using your observation of looking around to see what is going on, to find the, the, the angle, the place, shooting it from down low, using its shadow as a leading line, putting the brightest area of the picture behind the lighthouse. You hear me say this week after week. Um, it's a really great shot, Petro. Congratulations. I'm sorry I thought I had you in the shortlist shout outs, but I don't know why you're not there. Apologies. John, 
I'm not sure if we have an expo if you're here, I'd love to know. John, I'm not sure if we have an exposure issue here, or whether you actually shot it to be a high key image. I would be interested to know if you're here. Um, because there's things about it I really like, and there's things about it I'm not sure about. Now, if you shot it to be really bright as a high key image, that's great. That's creativity. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I think there's rather a lot going on top and bottom. And I wonder if we need quite so much at the bottom. I'm struggling a bit to know where I'm supposed to look. We've got a nice little bit of sort of mossy mud bank in the middle, just below the horizon there. Um, then, you know, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, George, I, I did see that. It says it's a high key as the tide was going out. I wonder if it could have been actually more high key. If you were going to go for high key, it's like, go high key. <clears throat> Almost let's see into the shadows of the rocks, the shadow side of the rock. Push it up even further, go absolutely bonkers. Um, but, yeah, good. Yeah, again, sorry, who said that? Most, yeah, good spot, George. Um, but, yeah, I, I feel we need a point of focus, something to actually look at. Something to sort of take us through to. Uh, I feel that might have helped just a bit. Let's have a look at this one here by Mike Ranger. I think it's a... Did you do it with a phone? I don't know. Again, I tend not to read them and just try and go with the image. Whatever. It looks like a panoramic rather than something that's been cropped. Um, and I do love those reflections. I really do. And I can see the problem you are having. Because, yes, you have got a little bit of a highlight off to the right um, of that on the other side of the water. <clears throat> but it's not quite that strong. I don't know where the sun orientates itself. If, if I think if the sun had been somehow coming behind, I can see there's a little blue hole in those clouds. If the sun had been somewhere up there, I don't necessarily mean being in that blue hole in the sky where the clouds have got a gap but I think if light would coming through there from behind it would be really strong it's a nice image as it is really nicely composed and put together great reflection being in the right place at the right time um, no no question hi Mike ah yeah okay it is it's a pano I love panos pan stitches are awesome or even on the phone I do quite a lot of that with the phone um, it's nice I, it's a nice shot I'm not knocking it <clears throat> I think if we'd had some stronger light going on, it, it would have been better. I don't know if you've got more, if you waited. Things don't always go to plan. You're going to see that in the next challenge video when we finish this. Um, because, you know, sometimes we think, ah, oh, such a great shot. And you can't always go back tomorrow. But um, Lorraine was just saying, could it be edited? The thing is with that, Lorraine, it is very, very hard to edit light. Um, it's an incredibly skillful job <clears throat> because you have to literally paint in all the highlights and shadows across an entire image. And if you miss bits, it looks kind of weird. There are a few tools in Photoshop, I believe. I'm not a Photoshop expert by a very long stretch of the imagination. There are, I believe, some, some lighting tools in Photoshop where you can start to do things like that. I think some of you are probably better with Photoshop than I am because... <coughs> Excuse me, I tend not to use it very much. Um, could it be helped with the boat on the pond? Mm, possibly can, maybe. I think the light is the main thing because to me that that triangle, those those triangular trees, sort of more to the right, they kind of draw the eye. And I think if if we had some better light, it would make the reflection stronger, and the whole thing would hold together. It's so got that lovely little hints of foreground and the bits on the side holding it together. Um, but yeah, it is. It's interesting. You're late, Ben. Stand in the corner this minute. Welcome and thank you. Um, not allowed boats. <clears throat> Fair enough. I'm guessing it's a it's a garden somewhere. It's it's somewhere a bit special, isn't it? <clears throat> but anyway, I'm ignoring some of you. I kind of liked this as well. I think this is a brave composition. April. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure what's going on. It's, I, initially, I, I kind of thought, there's a guy hoovering outdoors. <laughs> I just kind of realised that actually you're on a boat, I think it is, and it looks to me like there's a, there's a small cleat down there just near where the sun is. Uh, if you're here, really cool, say hello, uh, <clears throat> April. 
I kind of like it. I think this is another one. You you could have got away with brightening it up a bit and still maintain that silhouette thing. I think you'd have had a little bit stronger sky. The other thing, and I'm being harsh because there's some good shots in this week. So there really are. There always are. But <clears throat> the better you are, the harder or harsher I will be. I think if you could have moved yourself to your right just a little bit, you could have probably put that bright bit of sun just behind the cleat where the rock is. And I don't know, maybe lowered the camera a eeny bit, something like that. It's hard, isn't it? Because you don't want to lose the sun. But I think it would have made it stand out more. It would have said rope, cleat, boat, and, and the silhouette of the guy had been secondary. But it is very, very well done. No question. No question. Judith. I kind of like your idea. Now this shot looks a little bit bitty. Um, did you do it on a phone or something? Doesn't say. <coughs> you have got a bit of quite nice backlight. Um, and I quite like those little petals. You have got some nice backlight. You've got a nice simple background, but the whole picture looks like it's sort of disintegrating a bit. I don't know if you've cropped this like crazy uh, in order to get in on it. I'm not quite sure. It's, it's okay. I, I'd probably like to give it more space. You guys know I'm a negative space junkie. That's just me. I don't know what you think. I'd probably like to see just a bit more space around it. But I think the thing here, I don't usually talk about image quality, but this one is just a little bit falling apart. Very, very noisy indeed, David. Yes. Um, I don't have a problem with high ISOs and noise, but this one is just kind of collapsing a little bit. Um, and I think it could have done with a bit more exposure. But it is a nice spot. You have spotted some nice backlight. It is bringing the flowers together well. You've got a great little rim light going on around Buddha's head. So, well spotted. <coughs> I thought this was a very powerful picture. Um, oh, I can't read my... Andres. Uh, it's such a powerful picture. And it's a very brave subject as well. It really is. Um, I really like the way you've got the light coming off the rails. And yeah, it's a dark subject. And you've made it a dark picture, which, which works. That works. Um, I don't know whether... My, my first thought was, I don't know which direction those clouds are going. But I wonder if it might have worked a little better if the cloud had been over the sun. Now, if that cloud's heading to the sun, um, maybe just a few minutes later, uh, it might have worked. I quite like the thought of, of the rim light around the cloud, but then, of course, you would be sacrificing some of the light shining on the rails. It's a tough one, <coughs> but I do like the way you put it together. It is a powerful image. There's no question about that. And I do like the way you've used the light on the rails and to use them as, you know, you are taking someone on a journey just as those poor people went all those years ago. What do we got here? <coughs> Carl Heinz. Um, <coughs> it's a very, very contrasty image. Um, you've got some great textures and things going on across the land there and there's some lovely colours. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I wonder if you could have reduced that contrast just a bit. Uh, the light is just picking up nicely on the foreground, on all those little feathery grasses and things. And I can't help but wonder, you could almost have probably brought this down a bit so we could see more of that. And possibly if you could have reduced the contrast, you might be able to brighten it up a bit too. Not necessarily talking about in post-production. I, I don't know whether you post-produced this. If you did post-produce it, uh, and, you, and you have worked on this in Lightroom, it has a look as though you've kind of tried too hard. Um, it's almost like you had something and you thought, I'm, I'm going to work this hard, and, uh, but, it, but it looks a little bit like that. I could be wrong. Uh, but I think possibly... I like the way you position the sun in the middle, by the way. I think that's really cool. I like that. I think maybe a little lower camera angle and maybe a little bit less contrast, possibly a little bit more exposure at the time of shooting. Um, I'm not sure quite what it needs, but... Um, mm. Nice one, nonetheless. Well spotted. 
What have we got here? Ah, Kari. Or Kari. I don't know how I produce, pronounce your name. Um, you got so you did some really nice light on this. These things are really hard to photograph. Um, it really is. It's a difficult shot. Forgive me, I'm looking at the other one because it, it's a bit bigger. Um, is that a real car? Is that a model car? Doesn't really matter. Um, the light on it is really, really, really nice. You're bringing out all those shapes, all those contours of the car really beautifully. I like the positioning of it. What I don't like is it is such a tight crop. I think it, it could live with a little bit more space either side, a little bit of room because it's like the bumper and the back end are bang hard up against the edges. Uh, I don't know if you're here, uh, Kari. It would be interesting to know. Jane just said it looks a little trapped. Yeah, I would agree with you. Oh, look, there's a few I've just noticed. <laughs> Everyone's going, I think it needs a bit more space. Mike's car, Malcolm. Yeah, right. <clears throat> you haven't seen well, it's in a few YouTube videos. I've had the same one for about 11 years. It's a right old banger, covered in dents and things now. Um, I could not back up anymore. I was against the wall. It's a real car. Cool. Well, you spotted and used some really great light because that is a really, really hard shot to get. It's a shame you didn't have a bit more space, but nicely spotted, Carrie, and thank you for commenting. Oops, I just clicked in the wrong place. Jean-Paul, I like your idea. I really do like your idea. I think it's a great idea. Um, I really do. Couple of things. That red light on the wall behind is so fighting with your uh, pool player or snooker player. And the other thing is, I just wonder, I don't know if this is a grab shot or whether it's something that you've got a friend of yours and you said, oi, go and rack the balls up while I take a picture of you. If you could have moved to the right just a little tiny bit, I think you could have lost that light on the wall behind. My other thing is, perhaps if he had glanced up at you, if you could have got a little moment there, just a glance up, or maybe even a glance to the side, as, as though someone else was, was saying something to him, and he's sort of, you know, he's racking up the balls and sort of going, yeah, you get stuffed, I'm going to whoop your ass. I don't know. <clears throat> I think possibly it, it, that's all. And I'm being harsh because it is a nice shot, but I think if you could lose that piece on the right, if, I, if you stick your thumb, get your thumb, people, get your thumbs out. I really want to see those thumbs. Just kind of line it up and just slide it over that orange light on the screen, and I think it becomes a lot more powerful. Just try that and see what you think. What do you think, guys? Do the, th do the, do the thumb block. Tell me what you think. Uh, Steve was saying it could be cropped. I think it would be too tight. I think it would be much too tight if you cropped it. The edges of the shot, in the, the pool player needs a little bit more space as as they have, which is really great. And we have got that great little pool of light on the table. Um, I think cropping would have, would have made it a bit like uh, Carrie's car, just a little bit sort of claustrophobic. Uh, yeah, George, you, you could, of course, clone it out if you've got Photoshop or something. I'm much too lazy to do things like that. I kind of prefer to just try and do it in the camera and then I can't be, you know, I don't have to worry about it. But nice shot, nice idea. Oh, here's something that I really rather liked as well from Ian Rawlings. What beautiful light. I was out near this place oh, a couple of weeks ago. I came back right past Glastonbury Tour on my, one of my old bikes coming back from Cornwall because I tend to meander down the back roads. That's absolutely gorgeous. I love the mist in the valleys and I like the softness, the fact that it is a kind of low, soft pastel cover color it is really great it is really nice I, I, I don't know I can't think of the geology and the topography as to where you were you know looking if you were on the tour and you got the hill next to it, it it's it's really nicely done um, the reason I'm hesitating over it is because what I'm seeing is because the two the two main factors are our tree on the tour and then the Sun up here 
and I'd love to see them just brought slightly close together. Or maybe, maybe, I can't help wondering how this would look as a panoramic. Either as a wide shot, you know, going this way, but a bit narrower, you could take the top off, or if you're into that sort of thing, just shoot some a panoramic like that, because it's kind of like, I really want to see more of that misty landscape. I love the way you've got the light on the tour. Maybe keep the tour on the edge of the shot, just as you have, but then give us a little bit more off to the right. Uh, yeah, Monica just said it at the same time. Um, maybe a horizontal shot. Yeah, those were my thoughts. But it's beautifully done, beautifully executed, beautifully spotted, great light. Good on you for climbing up there. I don't know what time this is. It's obviously not crack of dawn because the sun's climbed a bit, but you've still got some mist going on in there. Nicely done. Nicely done. Patsy Fairclough, <clears throat> you spotted a lovely little pool of light here. Um, I love the rim light on the rock behind those. Uh, now, are those ferns or brackens? I think those are ferns. I'm not very good at that. Um, it is nice. It is nice. My only thing is, I think your highlight on the ferns or brackens or whatever they are is just a bit too bright. In this case, the burnout doesn't work so well because it's burning out our subject, the main subject. You'd have still have had the rim light on the rock and I think almost letting everything else drop almost into black. You'd still have little hints of detail. But I think the brackens, the ferns, are just that little bit overexposed. Uh, Anik just said it looks a bit busy. It does look a bit busy, but I think it would have been okay had the exposure been dropped because we'd have a hint of rim light on the tree root and the bottom right corner, a li another little hint on the rock behind, and all those little bits of rim light would have kind of led us back through the shot so that we arrived at the ferns. Well spotted though, really well spotted. Um, I think it's a great job. Oh, here's something I liked. <coughs> um, Tom Lynn. That's such a great expression. You've you, you found that it is a nice little piece of light too. I don't know if you posed it or whether you, you followed uh, this little fella around hoping for a moment. It's, it's so hard photographing children. It's really nice light, I get it. And that quite hard side light, it works because you know he's got such flawless skin. I like the position of the hands and all the rest of it. I'm guessing that's just shooting at the right moment, that hint of a reflection. I'm being hard on you, that's all. I can't help but wonder, could you have moved to your left a bit? If you could, you might have been able to lose that kind of square box on the table. I know you'd have lost more of the reflection, um, but it is a nice shot. It really is. Well spotted. What have we got here? We have... Ben Jordan. This is another one which you've got such a great idea. You've caught such a perfect moment in this shot. You've got such a powerfully coloured sky. But it looks to me like it's been a little bit overcooked in post-production. It has a feeling around the water, etc., that something's been pushed beyond its, its tolerance. But it's such a beautiful spot. I think... I, I could be wrong. If you're here, please, please, please correct me, Ben. Um, it is beautiful. You've got great darkness in the top, that band of brightness, the water jumping in the air. But when you look at the water, it, it, it's kind of the colours are separating as opposed to sort of bleeding together gently. They're not, um, what's the word chefs use? Um, the opposite of separating, I don't know what it is. But it's kind of like it's going red, blue, red, blue, rather than red into blue. And it's like a relaxing thing. But it's a really great idea, beautifully composed. You've caught a great little moment. Um, in this case, I'm being really hard on you, I know. If you could have had a faster shutter speed, because the droplets are just a little bit blurred. It's one thing, you know, you kind of have a bit of movement and go like, yeah, we want to see this move. I think if you could have used a slightly faster shutter speed, you could have probably absolutely frozen them. And if it was a little bit brighter, I think you'd have really brought those droplets to life because the light is coming through them. And all those little droplets should have picked out the red and just sparkled beautifully. Um, 
Ah, that's you, is it, Lord? Lord Jord. Got it. Got it. I get the connection. Um, yeah. Well, there we go. You know, you know what's what. And it's a really hard thing, you know, when when we're doing this stuff because post production is a whole other world of skill. You know, when I started in photography, we were doing stuff in dark rooms with chemicals and things, and it was just a whole other world um, of learning how to do things. Now. Of course, in those days, most people gave their film to a printer and let them print it. And of course, you can do that these days with post-production. There are people out there who will do it. We're going to talk a little bit about that a bit later. But yeah, nice work, nice work. And nice work here too from Barbara. Um, what a fabulous expression. You've done a lovely little backlit shot. The, the way that light is just putting that little halo um, into her hair. That expression, those big watery eyes you could just fall into. Um, what a really great shot. And it's such a great expression. You've caught that just, just, just the right moment. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to say I would love it either to be a much tighter shot you know literally almost coming off at the chin we're just having you know the eyes and and the mouth almost but because you got that lovely light the other thing you could try is to pull back a bit give her just a little bit more space because her shot is so engaging i don't think it needed to be quite so tight one or the other great exposure well composed <coughs> Nice and sharp, beautiful light, perfect decisive moment. I just feel it either needed to be a real tight eyes, nose, mouth. With, you know, you see little sparkles in the hair out either side or pull it back a bit. So we, we make a little bit more of that gorgeous light that you found. Where else are we going? We're going to go here to have a look at this one of Philips. Because that's just so simply gorgeously done. <clears throat> and my only criticism is that it's just a little bit soft. Or it certainly looks that way on my screen, not only on, on the YouTube screen. Um, but you really use the light so, so well to pick out all those little fine hairs around the plant. You've found a great soft background of a sort of complementary colour to put it against. Less is indeed more, Diane. Um, sorry, Sharon <coughs> and Diane, but it's beautifully done. It's the sort of thing that you know you can see in a picture frame or in a poster shop. It's it's nice and simple. It's it's engaging, and it's so pretty. It's it's nicely done. It really is beautiful use of light. Now we got one here from Daniel. Is it? Oh, I'll see when it pops on. Donald. Sorry, Donald. Um, yeah, well, you, know, you, you, you said it yourself, I think, in the comments. Um, the problem we've got here is, I think, the light is crashing into your flower. Um, and also, half of the flower is in sunlight, half of it's in shade. Now, our eyes, we will see the detail in both, and it looks fine, but the camera usually can't manage that, not without a bit of help anyway, one way or the other. So... We got that shadow halfway through the flower, and of course your shadow in the background. Um, Beauty in the Beast, you said. The Beast being the photographer's long shadow, obviously. Now I think, again, I think if the light had been behind the flower, it, it would have probably worked. There is an argument for the Beast shadow, which I, I kind of like in a way. But I think the biggest problem is where the light is half and half on the flower, and I think if you if you found one facing the other way on the rose, it might have worked a little better. This one here by Christoph is, you've got such great colours. And it's kind of like, it looks like you've done some post-production. I think you've taken it right on the very edge of as far as it could go. Had you gone an even a minute bit further, it might not have worked. I could be wrong. Maybe you didn't. Um, you've got some great colours and some great light and I kind of like your composition filling those corners and we're seeing that that cloud in the middle but there's something missing to me 
it's really hard. I don't know what it is. That tree at the bottom, in the middle, is really cool. And I don't know. It's almost like it... Because of where the sun is, I feel like there should be a shaft of... There should be light coming across the ground below. And that would have lit that tree up. And I'm not quite sure why it isn't doing it. What's causing it to be in shade? I'm not quite sure what it needs. But I feel it needs more of a focal point. Something to really look at. I mean, because I love that little bit of roof that, that's popping out as well. Um... It's really, it's really cool. Sorry, I can't give you anything more constructive with that, but I think if the light was waking up that tree, that would have done it. A bit of rim light on that tree, and I'm not quite sure why it's why it's not there. Um, sorry, someone's just saying, did you miss the ugly cars in the bottom? It was only a small time slot. Uh, I can't see any ugly cars in the bottom, no. Am I missing something? We got some beautiful light anyway. And maybe there are some ugly cars there. I don't know. Did you darken that foreground a bit? And that maybe is why we lost the light in the tree. It's it's a kind of almost there, in my opinion. But it is a great, a great bit of colour. And I love the clouds. Hamang. <coughs> I like your idea. I do like your idea. Um, I like the way, I like the, the light, the, the feathery light on those little bits of feather. You know, the little, little I don't know what you call them, the whiskery bits alo along the feathers. It is uh, really, really nice. The sun, I could be wrong, looks to me as though you, you've darkened it a bit. I don't know. It's got this funny sort of little bit of yellow halo. halo. I could be completely wrong. What is going through my head is, what if you'd lined it up so that the sun was a bit brighter, but you had it right behind the eye of that peacock feather? I think it may have just kind of... Well, oh, Diane just said it. I'm going to go home. Diane, you can take over. You're ahead of the game. Um, plumes, yeah. It's the little... little. There's a name, isn't it, for the little tiny, eeny little hairy bits on the edge of the plume. Maybe that is it. Apologies, George, if I'm wrong. Um... Yeah, I think it could all have been a tiny bit brighter. The sun looks as though it's been darkened. And I think had you got the eye of the feather right over the sun, I think it would have brought the whole thing to life a bit. Uh, but it is really nicely done. Um, might have silhouetted it too much to see the colouring in the eye of the plume. I don't think so, Jenny, because that's where exposure comes in as part of composition. So you'd kind of have to control the exposure so that didn't happen. Don't let the camera do the exposure for you. The camera will give you a great starting point, and very often it's fine. But also, you know, you can very quickly and easily have a look and go, nah, I want a bit more of that. And you can just argue with the light meter and just, just go, nah, I want it a bit brighter or a bit darker. Um, but yeah, it is a very high dynamic range shot, Ken. You are absolutely right. Uh, but it can still work, and it's a nice idea. Nice idea. Here's a beautiful idea. Here's a beautiful idea coming in from <coughs> Eileen. It's just such fun, and I really like it. It's it's a beautifully caught little moment. You know, that, that rainbow from the window just cutting across the cat's head. I just think it is a really well-caught little moment. It's really nice. I don't know if there's a reason you've cropped it quite so tight. Because to me, I think... A bit more space above the cat and a bit more space below, as opposed to cropping it as a square. I, I don't know whether you shot this landscape way or upright. <clears throat> if it was shot upright, I think it would look really cool with a little bit of space above so that the edge of the shot isn't actually cutting into your cat's hair and a little bit more of the floor below because it would be really powerful. It would be an unusual view because of the positioning. And I just love that little rainbow running right through the whole thing. Yeah, indeed, Moose. It's kind of like a portrait crop, isn't it? An upright shot. But it's well spotted and it's well caught. It really is, because you can't say to the cat, go over there and sit there. Well, you can, but nothing much is going to happen. Trisha, I know this place well, because it's down the road from where I live. And it is a mule of a place to try and photograph. Um, you spotted some really nice light. 
It is nice light, and I know what's going... Yeah, the sun's going down to the right behind the shingle bank. I know this place well. I can't help wondering, had you shot from the other side? You know, you. I think you are on the, the seawall... Not the seawall side, you know, the quay side, the harbour side. That's what I'm trying to say, the car park, the sailing club side. I think possibly from the other side. It might have worked. Another thing that can work with when you have a load of boats like this, because it's it's just kind of busy, we're not quite sure what we what we want to look at. Um, is if you use a longer lens, you can sometimes pick up details of boat, and also it depends which way the breeze is blowing. If the boats have got their bows into the sunlight, um, you can often find angles where you can line them up and then just use a shallower depth of field and sort of pick out part of a boat with a rope going over. I've got a shot of exactly that, taken in exactly that place somewhere, which I was going to try and pop in to sort of see if it would help, but um, yeah, it's it's a difficult place to shoot. There are places like this in the world where it's a wonderful place to go and you walk around, you walk around, you go, oh, this is great. You take a load of pictures and somehow they don't quite capture it. They're challenging places. There are photos there but they can take a bit of liberating. Nice effort. Another nice idea here. Uh, Jonathan, I do like your idea. I like the way you've used the burnout and that high, high bright spot right in the middle to kind of draw the eye to where we want to look. Now hands, they are such difficult things to photograph. To me, it looks like they're just a little bit forced. I don't know what it needed to be. Maybe to create a shape, uh, you know, with the hands. I get where you're going. It's like you're going, oh, it's too bright, blocking the light. I, th I think you're overthinking it a bit by doing that. Um, but I think possibly if you could have made a little shape and had that brightness right in the middle, let it burn right in the middle of a shape, rather than kind of trying to go for this, oh, stop it, that's too bright sort of thing. Um, but... Nice idea. Somebody's leaving. Goodbye, Sharon. Take care. See you next time. <laughs> um, it's coming into a social club, isn't it? Those are my only thoughts. The hands look awkward. They just look a little bit awkward. I think maybe, yeah, you could have found a slightly more relaxed way to possibly bring it together. We've got some great stuff going on here. Jenny, I like this shot. You've got some movement in the waterfall. It's probably very dark. I, I, I don't know where you are. Smoo Caves. You see, I should have read it, shouldn't I? Um, slow shutter speed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and you balance your camera on a fence post. That's real class photographer thinking, that is. Good for you. My thing is, it's a slightly difficult picture to look at because I'm finding that the artificial light, that little pool of light on the right, is fighting with the waterfall. I'm going, I'm, I'm bouncing. What do you think, guys? I'm kind of bouncing. Waterfall, side cave, waterfall, side cave, waterfall, side cave. I'm, I'm kind of bouncing, going a bit giddy. Um, you know, it's great thinking, and I can see where you're going, but I think probably less is a bit more. I think both could work independently, one way or another. I think you maybe if you could have kind of had just the waterfall part of the cave. Um, I don't know, and, and found an angle where you could shoot and just pick up a little bit of that yellowy light coming across the bottom. So you've got the waterfall and, and, and the, the, the foamy bit coming in, and then just a hint of that side cave with that bit of colour, because it would kind of add a bit of intrigue. I don't know, it's one of those things you have to sort of try and see what would happen. Uh, okay, got it. Hello, Jenny. Very restrictive, yeah, these things can be very much like that. I think both work, and I think the side cave could work really well, possibly by giving it a bit more space and a bit more exposure with your fence post. That is true photographer thinking. That's professional photographer thinking. It really is, guys. <coughs> a bit of space and probably a little bit because you've got nice light coming across the rocks, and then you'd have that sort of little yellowy grotto. It's intriguing. Nicely done. Let's see what we got. What do we got? What do we got? We've got a lovely little shot going on here. Anne, 
I really like this. I love it. You've got a great little pool of light, and these shots are so hard, and I feel so awkward criticising you because you can't control the robin. But the robin has cut its own head off because the light isn't in the right place, you know? I don't know if Robin hopped a little bit. If you're here, that would be really cool to, to let us know. It's, it's well spotted and it's well captured. And it's one of those frustrating things, isn't it? If we had the light on the Robin's head as well, just if that little bird had been just like an inch closer to you, it would have been good. Damn that Robin, indeed. Damn that Robin, indeed, Moose. Here is a beautiful composition. Um... Andy, it is a beautiful composition. No question about that. Really well put together. Very classical landscape shot. I'm guessing it's in the Lake District. I think I know where this tree is because many years ago I was hired to make a bunch of DVDs to go away on a on, to give away on a magazine. Did it with Tom Mackey a long time ago, and I'm pretty sure we went here. Um, North Wales, is it? <coughs> whatever if it's north wales i didn't go there here's what i'm going to say it's a beautiful composition i do kind of like it but to me the lights are not quite the right place i can see, you can see that there are beams of light moving around within that image and they're on the hillside off to the left maybe you've been there for hours i don't know but if you could have had one of those beams of light land on the tree and not have been on the hillside, or even on the hillside too, but I feel you need a little pool of light on the tree. If you could have got one of those little light pools on, on the foreground area of the shot, that would be such, such, such a strong image because it would have lit up the tree and it would have had the effect of making the clouds and, and the background darker and even more moody and it would be so, so, so strong. That's why I say I'm not a landscape photographer because you have to sit around for hours waiting and hoping for that to happen. Um, some of you guys who've been on my webinars, there's a, there's a shot I've got of a, of a row of trees and exactly this scenario with a patch of light on a hillside and you can see the patch of light slowly coming down the hillside step by step until eventually it hits the line of trees and it was a case of click and then the light had gone off them. But, you know, I was there for ages 45 minutes or more waiting and hoping a bit of light would do it and it might not do it um yeah but well composed nicely put together shot it really is what do we got here carol i'm sure it says carol forgive me <laughs> it is hello carol i can see where you're going and you've got some nice light on your um on your drinking person, on your drinking partner. The thing is, we've got that great big bright bit of white of sky going on there, and it's kind of spoiling everything because that bright bit of sky is taking over. If you could have found an angle, if you could have had the camera a bit higher, maybe in the same, you know, alignment, but a bit higher, so you could have your drinker against the background or against the greenery, you could have the whole shot would have brightened up and she'd have had gorgeous rim light. You can see that lovely rim light in her hair as it is, but it's kind of lost because she is so dark and the sky is so bright. You had a really good idea and you spotted something really good. This one is a composition thing. It's a camera angle and then I think it would have worked for you. Probably come up a little bit higher, lose that sky and, and just have your drinker against the dark area. It would have worked well. Um, Ken was saying a little bit of fill light would be nice. Yeah, yeah. Fill light, it works well if you're into using flash and stuff. I don't use it. Or I haven't used it for years. That's not true. I used it three years ago on a photo shoot that I did for one of my clients. But it's pretty rare. You can do all this stuff with available light for the most part. Uh, but it's a nice idea. It is a nice idea. Um, and I think we've got another beautiful idea and a beautiful little piece of light going on here from Martin. Just lighting up that little dandelion clock beautifully. It is so delicate and it is so well done. The only thing I have to say is why did you crop it so tightly? Because you've got a great background. You've got great colours going on. Um, I don't think it needed to be cropped 
anything like that tightly. It would have made it stronger had there been a bit of space around it. You know, you could position it, you could play with the space like a choreographer does with an empty stage. You know, you could position things within that space and make it a bit more noteworthy. Where I go with it immediately is, is more headroom, more side room, but quite a lot more headroom and just having it right in the middle, in that empty space, just popping up in the middle. Because with that gorgeous light you found, it would just pop. It doesn't need to be that that severe, the crop. It's kind of going, Dandelion Clock! And it doesn't need to. It doesn't need to. But nice, nice, nice light, well spotted. So this is the last of these before we hit into our shortlist shout outs. I love shots like this. <laughs> Linda? Yeah, Linda. I love things like this. I just find it it's it's a it's it's me. It's it's you know, I don't know what you guys think. Uh, yeah, sorry, I did shout on purpose. Um I love things like this. It's intriguing, it's different. I love the pacing. Is this something you set up? Is this something you saw? I have no idea. Um, from the point of view of the light, we, yeah, we've got some light sneaking over the tree, but it's kind of like, if you did stage this, if you're here, please tell me, I'd love to know. <clears throat> if you did stage this, you needed to be there just a bit earlier. Probably 10 minutes would have been all you needed, and you would have had, a sh you'd have had the backlight coming through you know, the fabric, and you'd have had shadows coming off the... the um, pedestrian crossing towards the camera this is, I really really like things like this it still works in my opinion because of the white um, Ken was just saying doesn't like that little bit of sun on the corner personally I don't mind it because it's not a huge great big area I don't think it's fighting with the subject because the subject is is bright is white and taking up a much larger space backlighting if the sun was a little bit higher it would have backlit we'd have had a lovely um, shadow coming towards the camera beautifully done so we're coming into our shortlist shout outs these of course are images that I harvest and I put them all into what I call the winners folder and then I have to go through them and go oh, I'm gonna have to move some out <clears throat> this is so difficult now I mentioned earlier I'm impressed by the amount of you that were getting your kit off this week. <laughs> and you've done some really cool things. You really have. Keith, this is a very um, Greek statue, kind of a, a shot, kind of an image. I like the way you, you've got side light coming in. I think you might have got away with moving that light back an any bit and letting it come forward. <clears throat> now, I did read this somewhere. Is this the one... Yes, you took this in daylight and you used off-camera flashes to give it the dark silhouette look. That's really cool thinking and it means you're obviously very technically skilled. Um, so for those of you who are not quite sure what we're talking about there, so it's daylight. And what Keith did was he set a shutter speed and an exposure which was considerably less than the daylight that was available and then set up his flash, the power of the flashes, so that it would overpower the daylight and set the camera for that. So that if this is a self-portrait, <coughs> it is only lighting up Keith. Well done. If you, it is a self-portrait, you shot this in daylight. I don't know if you did it in the garden, the street, car park. I'd like to think that you did do it in a car park. <laughs> but well done. It's nicely done. I can't really add much more to it. It is really nice. Hayley, another very powerful shot, very much of the sort of the glamour variety. You have got some nice backlight going on there, and I have a feeling this is you, isn't it? Um, and you've obviously got the tone and the figure to pull it off. My only thing with this, and it is a really well shot picture, you obviously know what you're doing. My only thing is, is kind of your pose. It's a little bit, I don't know, I'm not sure you need that. I don't know. I, I'm, it's not my field of expertise, <clears throat> but it is beautiful backlight. It is showing off 
muscle tone and form and shape really nicely and I like the way you've positioned you know your face your head it is nicely done and a, a big high five to all of you guys who are being really courageous in in what you're shooting and posting <laughs> Keith says it was on Livingston High Street ah I missed you <laughs> Nick another shot now this background looks suspiciously similar to this background so and I can also see that you guys collaborated and I like that I mentioned earlier about getting someone else to do post-production for you because it is a whole other skill it is a whole other thing to learn some people's you know skill is in the camera other people they can do both some are really really skilled at doing the post-production just like you know when I was learning the park photographics had their own lab and uh the guy who did the printing was a phenomenal printer. He was a good photographer, but he was a phenomenal printer. No question about that. And, uh, you know, I like the fact that uh, you and Haley collaborated and Haley, Haley did the post-production. I'm guessing you guys are part of the same team, let's say. Nicely done. Really nice backlight. I like the, the way it is just coming around the corner of your muscle tone there. You've got a great figure too. Um, very nicely done. I like it. I like it. Another one here with some beautiful kind of light. I like the way you've done this. <clears throat> uh, Manju, beautifully lit. Beautifully lit on that expression. I love the way you've got a little bit of the light in the corner too. I think that's courageous. It's not so much that it is distracting from the subject. But it's giving us a journey. I, I don't find the light... What do you think, guys? Do you find that light distracting or not? I don't find it distracting. I find it adds. I think without the light there, I'm not sure it would be quite so good. quite like including a little bit of a light. Um, the light adds something. Love the split light and the light in the corner. Yeah, exactly. It works. It works. If it was a great big ball of brightness, it wouldn't. But it works love the light washing across her face beautifully done beautifully done now i did something to your picture as well i'm being hard because i think it could have stood an eeny bit more exposure and still had that dark shadowy moody look so i did this i don't know what you think guys so i'm not saying the original doesn't work not by a long shot by the way i'm just giving my opinion on something so manju here's your shot and then all I did was just brighten it just a tiny, tiny bit. And I don't know what you think, guys. Bear Clive says too bright. Now, another thing, of course, to bear in mind with this is monitor calibration. The change I made is very, very, very small and subtle. I'm not saying you've got to calibrate your monitor. That's yawn boring. But it is one of those things. I might be seeing this slightly darker than you meant it to be, Manju. And who is it who just said, too bright for me somebody did i'm looking at this you might be seeing it brighter than i am because simply because your monitor is brighter than my monitor this is one of the great problems with looking at things digitally as opposed to as prints but you know we have other things going on here the only way it can be overcome is by ensuring that everybody's monitor is calibrated which isn't going to happen it's just not going to happen um, but it is really really beautiful shot well done Fabulous idea from you, Sharon. I really had to look at that for a minute. And I just love the idea. I think this is another one you could possibly have got away with brightening it up a little bit more. And it still would have been strong enough. But I just... It was intriguing. It made me stop. And I think that's the mark of an interesting image. Images don't necessarily you know, have to be amazing landscapes and all the rest of it. I think if an image makes someone stop and go, that's interesting... It's a great picture. <clears throat> um, I quite like it. I like the perspective. I like the what the, what you've done, you know, using a little torch and putting it behind an egg that you put cracks in. Um, I, I do like it. Nicely done. I like the reflection in the fork. I think you could have got away with brightening it up just an eeny little bit. What do we got next? This is just... Now, this made me stop and look a few times. 
I'm guessing it's a composite. If you're here, here, Phil, please tell us. Either way, I like your idea. Um, and I'm guessing you may have... Is it a selfie of you? I don't know. It's an intriguing image. There's no question about that. I'm guessing it's a composite. Yeah, I got Han Solo as well. Um, either way, it's well executed. It's nicely done. I like the position of the foot especially and the hands. Um, and I very much like the shadow on the floor. Well done. Nice shot. Another one I liked as well. Completely, completely different. Is this one of yours, Andrew? And I had to give you a shout out because I just love it. I love the misty hills and the light on the water and the waves and that little group of people on the edge of that huge, great big ocean. I like the way you've worked your exposure. Yeah, I, you've, you've really taken it down a bit to make the sky work. And I think you've done all that in camera. It doesn't look to me like you've done anything to it. Uh, either way, I just like it. I don't know what I can say. It's just it's on my list of shout outs because I like it. Nicely done. I thought this was beautifully done too. Again on the flower theme. Uh, nice one, John. I like the way you you kind of shot the back of the flower. Is that a sunflower? I'm not an expert. But also just by putting that bright piece of sun right behind it. And you've pulled your exposure down quite a long way. <clears throat> Usually I'm thinking, brighten it up a bit. But because you got that bright bit of sun there, I do love it. I just think it's beautifully done. All the little whiskey, whispery bits, whiskery bits that I can't think what they're called coming down the stem. Beautifully done. Lovely shot. Now this one, next one, I think this is going to be controversial. But I don't care because I like it. I really like it. Andre, I think you spotted a really great bit of light and I think you came up with something that I like a lot. It makes me stop and it makes me think. It makes me wonder what is going on. This, this is a me, this is a... It's just me. I love the use of black and white. I love the way you have got the chair just clipping the light. It's in the shade, but it's just clipping the light. It's just a mm, little piece of it just sliding through the chair. It's different. Exactly. You said it's different. Somebody said that. Steve. It makes me, it, it, it leaves me intrigued. What's going on here? Where are we? An old abandoned factory with a chair in it. Is someone going to be chained to it and beaten? Um... What is the story of this place? What is happening? And you've separated by having the light the way you have. It may not be backlight, but it doesn't matter. It's great light. It's separating the chair from the background. Uh, I really like that, Andre. I think it's a great shot. Lindy just said, who's missing? Yeah, exactly. Who's missing? It's interesting, isn't it? It's, it's what, what do you think, guys? What are your thoughts on this? What, what does it provoke in you? To me, it provokes thoughts and feelings, and that's why it makes me pause. What does it do for you? Just pop a few things in the comments before we move on, because I think it's really interesting. Um, James Bond torture scene, interrogation, chained and beaten. I don't know if any of you guys have seen the movie The Gentleman. Which, it kind of makes me think of that a little bit, which I thought was one of the best movies I've seen in many years. Makes me think, crime scene. Someone was abducted. <laughs> Not going to that dentist again. I don't think we have Tori Hunter with us. I'd have thought she'd have probably found an angle on this one. Um, exactly. Steve, the umbrella is intriguing. Very intriguing. There's stuff going on here, which I think is really interesting. Ah, oh, yeah, George said I did this in one of my videos. I'd, yeah, I'd forgotten that. There is something to do with a chair in an abandoned video with a shadow through it. You are right. Um, great shot, nonetheless. Let's move on. Mr. Mel Port, I was outside your shop earlier today. Seems to be featuring a lot of locals, doesn't it, at the moment? I'm sorry you didn't pop in to say hello if you're here. Now, I'm assuming that that's your lovely wife, Emma. If not, I won't tell a soul, mate. Because um, <laughs> it certainly looks like you. <laughs> I think it is. But it's a really great shot. I love it. Beautiful backlight. 
coming up the tunnel. It's putting all those textures into it. I, when I come and see it, I'm going to go, where the hell's that tunnel? It's a really great shot. I really like the way you've done it. There is nothing else to say. Great journey through it. We're looking into the light. We're facing the light. Where We've got a nice little bit of love and romance going on there. You guys have been married for centuries, haven't you? Beautiful image, Mel. Beautiful image. It's totally different. Eastern smile. I think you've done a few shots similar to this, but you're very good at them. And the, again, it shows that you don't need to have, you know, African plains and incredible locations to come up with a really beautiful, intriguing, simple picture because simple is often the best. I thought it was fascinating when we were doing stuff in lockdown. Everyone was just shooting in their front room and garden, the things that people were coming up with because actually it's easier to control the photography in those environments. Funny you say that, George. I thought, hmm, they all need to have a uniform sharpness on them. But you know what? I kind of like that orange one with a little broken bit. The more I looked at it, I thought, I like that because that's the individual. That's the one that stands out. That's the naughty pencil. But it's beautifully lit. That gentle, gentle, gentle backlight coming in. What does it say? Does it say anything much? Macro photography, you haven't said much about how it was lit. I'm guessing it's a window or something like that. Great little subtleties of, of tone going on in the background. All I can say is it's a nicely shot picture. It's pleasing, it's simple, it's easy, just like this one, which I really like, Sarah. This looks like a local scene too. If you're here, Sarah, please tell us where it is. Looks a bit new, for it makes me think of New Forest. I could, of course, be completely wrong. Um, I love the softness, I love the gentleness, the gentle sort of shadows and, and the way you've stood in just, just, just the right place to put the sun right on the edge of that tree so that it's just helping those shadows. And I, to me, I find that that line of shadow from you straight forward up the tree to the sun, it just kind of takes me down there, hits the tree and I spread out. And this is one of those intriguing images because it's like there isn't really like a subject, a destination. It's it's the whole image that works. But to me, it, the journey through it is really simple. We're going up the shadows, into the light, up the trees and out to the sides. And it really gives that feeling of, you know, the beginning of autumn. Um, I think it's really nicely done, really nicely done. I'm sorry, I haven't been looking to see if you answered at all, Sarah, if you're here. Beautiful shot. I had to give you a shout out. Just as with this one here, Mark. Um, I just think it's it's intriguing. You've been playing around with light painting, and I think this is this is I think is a toy car. But it's really really nicely done. Ah, oh, sorry, I should have read it, shouldn't I? All in camera, no Photoshop. It is light painting, and I think you've done it really nicely. I could possibly say a little bit more space around the car, but nonetheless, I just think you did it really well. You've got great light on the car, it's backlight. You've been playing around with something to create your, your swirls in the background, doing a bit of light painting. Um, yeah, Diane just said could be a car advert. It's very much like that. Possibly a hint more light on the front of the car might have helped rather than to the side, but mm, I'm being picky. Had to give you a shout out on that. Had to give you a shout out on this one too, Angie. Larkin Turner, because it's just a happy, happy, contented picture. And it's got lens flare in it, and it works. Um, there's a lot of talk, lens flare is bad, wicked, and wrong. You mustn't have lens flare. Well, I disagree. You can use lens flare to create meaning and, and feeling, and, and I like the lens flare in this. It's a very childhoody sort of a picture for, for, for me. I like it. It's, um, yeah, there's a happiness to it. I have no problem with that lens flare at all. Um, possibly lose a tiny bit of that tree line that's at the top. I'm being picky, but I like it. I'm being controversial here. I think it's a really nice picture. It's got a lovely warm feeling. What do you think, guys? Just pop in a couple of comments. Um, warm feeling of joy. Rupert's saying feels that the lens flare adds to the dynamic. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. And again, of course, it's not to everyone's feeling. No, it's not to everyone's taste. 
uh, cropped out highlights. Yeah, I think I yeah maybe yeah take out a little bit of the highlight, but keep the lens flare because it's 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 great. I love it. It's a balmy kind of still slightly warm but moist autumn day, and we have a child having a great time. Beautiful piece of light coming on here to Linda O'Neill. Um, that's gorgeous, gorgeous light on your sitter subject person. I really do like it, and I like the you know the sheaves, the leading line that's sort of coming in from the bottom corner. But it is such beautiful, beautiful light. You've got sort of it's backside light or whatever you want to call it, but it's really brought the textures of a costume out beautifully. I think you did exactly the right thing having that door open, um, so we can see what's going on. My only thing is, I don't know how wide that door is. Is that part of a double door? If the other door frame was there, I'd like to see just a tiny bit of turn on the camera so we could see the whole of the frame. To me, somehow, it would go like door, person, and, and the two would come together. I, it's just me. I am being ever so picky, and I could be completely wrong, but it's a lovely shot. Nicely done, Linda. Nicely done. Ooh, we've got some really good stuff, Eric. <coughs> bit of me this isn't it <laughs> great bit of backlight lovely 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 long shadow lovely long shadow that little human being in in, in i totally get it walking along there you can feel the sun on this girl's back do you know what i had to double look then for a minute i thought i'm sure that's a girl but because it's small on this thing and because of the mask i'm thinking is that a guy is that a beard it isn't um really really nice image absolutely works in black and white Eric, my only, only thing is, I don't know if you could, if you were in place, if you could have shot it just a moment earlier so that her head, the, the shadow, the top of the shadow wasn't cut off. It was still in there. That would be perfect. But I'm being picky. It is nonetheless a great shot, and it absolutely works. Another beautiful bit of photography here. Margie Wright-Jones. What do you think when you look at this guys how does it make you feel when you look at this i really want to know how does this make you feel i'm not going to say too much because it just i just want to know what you think i love the composition i like the little row of leaves at the top i like the the line of the fence and the leaves at the bottom angry birds it makes me yeah somebody said it who said it first Jules, yeah. Yeah, the bird looks surprised, absolutely. It makes me want to giggle. It makes me smile. It's so comical. Great bit of backlight. Great bit of backlight, making that tuft of hair, feather, whatever it is, sort of sort of stick up. The way the bird is almost kind of leaning backward like it's having a chuckle. Um, really well spotted, really well taken. Uh Technically, obviously, everything is done just right. Just right. Great shot. Looks windy. Who said that? Alec. No, Jamie. Yeah, bad hair day. Very nice. Very nicely done. Now, this is something I never, ever imagined would happen in a photo lockdown. I, I really am a little bit shocked at myself and probably some of you to be honest but I really like this <laughs> a duck in the shout outs I can hear you cheering <laughs> oh Diane did you get there just before me <laughs> but it is a really great shot that is such beautiful shot it is lovely light you know i don't know why you guys are so fixated on this duck theme it's like i'm sorry it's 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 an old joke it's time to let it go but it is a great shot the light is perfect that gorgeous bit of backlight and the way you have shot this ashley you know with those autumn leaves and the little ring of water it is a real autumnal feel. I just think it is a really, really engaging, nice little wildlife shot. I could see that in a frame somewhere. Um, I think you've shot that really, really nicely. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. It's a really great shot. And there's some lovely bits of light going on here, Matthew. 
it kind of goes to show, you know, light is so important. We, we know where we're looking. It's beautifully executed. It's nicely composed. We know where we're looking. We're looking at that bench. Now, normally I'd go, ah, oh, we need someone sitting on the bench, but I don't think we do. This one makes me want to go and sit on the bench. I don't know about you guys, if you can stop talking about ducks for 30 seconds, but this makes me want to go and sit on the bench. Beautiful light coming up through that wood. I don't know about you, I, I can hear, I can hear that forest and smell it. I can hear the rustle of the, the leaves and, you know, forests make a noise, don't they? There's little noises of birdsong and, and all the rest of it. I think it's a beautifully done shot. It's well composed. Obviously, technically, everything's done beautifully, but the thing which makes it rock is that light. That is what makes it rock. We've got the light hitting the chair and the, the bench and mm, beautifully done. Really great, great shot. I think this is fun in a totally different way. Now, could it withstand some more exposure? Yes, but you know what, Marilyn? I like the way it's just shot almost as a silhouette. It's kind of like we don't need to see everything, just the angle of the dog's head, that beautiful piece of rim light, but it's the angle of the dog's head. We know what the expression is without having to see it. And that, I think, is what is so clever with this. I think it's a great shot. I really do. I don't know what else to say. There's little hints of something going on in the background, I think, because that's another thing, guys. Of course, with new Facebook, instead of having a nice clean black background, it does this silly ass thing where it puts something in behind it. And that really irritates me. But there's nothing we can do about that. Nonetheless, I don't want to detract from your shot here, Marianne. It is gorgeous. You don't need to see the dog's face. Everything about his body language says everything there is to say. Beautiful. I kind of like this one too, which is why it's in the shortlist shout outs, Adam. I do like it. I'm intrigued and also the amount of work you've probably gone to to shoot it. Um, what is it, an 80s sci-fi feel in the cornfields. Well, you've achieved that, haven't you? It's just good fun. You put a lot of work into that. Um, I don't know if it was raining. I don't know how you did it. It doesn't matter. It, you achieved your objective really, really well. You're looking in, you know, you're, you're, you're moving into the light. You're being taken up. I really like the way you interpreted the theme. It's a different angle onto it, a very different angle onto it. Great, great creative thinking there. Really well done. Really, really well done. So that takes us into our runners up. So if you haven't been featured in something yet, you never know, you might be in here. And as I say, if, you, if you're not, it doesn't mean you took a bad picture. It just means I can't talk about everything. So let's go straight in with our runners up. First of all, we've got Nicholas with a very, very classical landscape. And it's really gorgeous. I just love it. How can you not want to look at that? How can you not want to walk across that field and go at the cows? Because I love cows. They're just such friendly creatures. They're just, they're just so funny. Um, the perfect moment. People say decisive moments are to do with street photography. No, they're not. They're they come in all forms of photography. The perfect moment, just as that very bright bit of sun is just touching below the horizon. It's lighting up the underneath of the clouds. It's gorgeously composed with the, the old house or the barn. I mean, I don't know if it says anything, not really. Um, absolutely gorgeous. What more can I say? Absolutely beautiful, beautiful, classical landscape, perfectly executed, really well done at the perfect moment. Sandra Sim. I just love it. You, it. Everything. I just love it. I love street photography. You know that. I like seeing people and how they live in this world and, and little things, you know, it's just so it's someone pressure washing. But I love the way you put it together, the backlight coming through all that water. It makes me feel kind of cold and wet. I like the way you very, very carefully composed it and got all those lines just 
nice and straight and everything. I like the snaky line of the hose, the, the reflection on the wet ground. But also, I think, you shot this at just the right moment. We were talking about decisive moments. I bang on about it a lot, I know. There's something about the angle of that, that jet, that pressure washer. It's kind of going straight into a corner. It would have probably worked just as well if it was going upwards. But I think it's a really great shot, Sandra. Well shot, well done, well spotted, well executed. Um, great picture. I love it. This one as well. I don't know, how can you not like this from Angela Gledhill? This has such a journey in it, and it's it's really beautiful. You, you've, you've got some lovely colours going on here. I really like the way you have lined up those stepping stones directly with the sun and let the lens flare in and, and, and a bit of sort of starbursty stuff going on. Um, I also think you're, you're actually kind of brave to, to have a shallow depth of field on it. Because, of course, I, I probably wouldn't. I'd have probably gone for a deeper one, but I still think it works. It's like peeping. <laughs> I do like to peep. Peeping around the corner of those leaves and sort of like, where should we go? Hey, look, we can go across here. Isn't that cool? I love the light coming across the field and backlighting the tree, you know, and, and the sheep over there. Um, really beautiful shot. I love the flare. I love the fact you've been brave enough to use a slightly shallow depth of field. It's different. This is what makes for great images because control of depth of field, it's still part of composition. You are composing a picture and part of that composition is your depth of field, just as your exposure, how bright or dark the picture is. It's, it's all of those things combined, where you position things. You've done a great job, Angela. I love that shot. I want to go and walk down there. I can smell that shot. It's another one. I can smell that picture. Kim Goucher. You again. <laughs> But it's again, it's just such a simple, simple picture, this one. It is so simple. It's just well spotted. Beautiful little piece of light with something really simple. And it works. It's it's strong. Simple things often um, work. Funny you just said that, Diane. It's a conversation I'm having with some people later about something. We shall see. Um, beautiful shot. I love it, Kim. What more can I say? You're pretty good at this stuff anyway. You know, we, we've seen you in here a lot over the weeks. Um, beautifully composed. I love the fact you've got your little um, dandelion seed right in the middle of the shot. It's in just the right place. Beautiful backlight coming through it. What more can I say? It's a lovely picture. Now, I don't normally go for silhouette type things, but I just love this one. Rupert. I love it. There's so much I like about it. I don't know whether you pose this, whether it's someone you know, whether you were just in position, whether you saw the light. If you're here, please, please, please tell us. Um, just lining up that shot and waiting for someone to come through the arch because it's the shadow that is just so great. That beautiful light cascading like a waterfall down the steps and that shadow taking us back to, oh, look, there is a person there. And then the sun in just the right place. Perfect, perfect timing. Absolute decisive moment. I think black and white was absolutely the right choice. Beautifully executed, technically perfect. What can I say? Great shot. Beautifully done. Which, of course brings us into our PLD light winner for this time. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining in. You did a really, really superb job. I think it's absolutely brilliant. And again, as always, I see this a lot. I apologize if your image hasn't been chosen to be talked about. But this week's winner, which I just really liked because it provoked things in me, was this one from Beverly. I love this picture, Beverly. There's something about it that I, I want to join in. I want to talk to this person. It's perfectly executed. You've got a great background, which is absolutely making him pop and stand out. You've got kind of 
light from behind and to the front. He's kind of facing the light, but the light's still behind. It's putting that beautiful, beautiful rim light on there. The position of his arm and finger and his expression, it's like a perfect moment. I don't know if you post this. If you're here, Beverly, please, please, please tell us. But it's like, it's to me, it's like someone has just said something to him and the way it's like his arm was resting on there. And you know how you do when someone says something and you're still listening and you're not going to interrupt. You just sort of go, because you are going to say, you are going to react. And I want to be part of that conversation, sitting next to that lake. Uh, that's what did it for me. I just think it's great. Jim, yeah, there's a conversation going on. Absolutely. Beverly, congratulations. That's a great shot. Please let... Ah, oh, Beverly, you're here. Cool. So it's real bit of street photography. You didn't pose it. It just happened. You watched and you saw something and you captured it perfectly. Absolutely great job. I love it. Nice one, Beverly. So you guys, please put your winning images into the winner's album within the group so that everyone knows where things are and they can come and check you out. Um, what more can I say? Emma will, of course, be in touch about webinar places and things. Webinars will be coming out again soon. I'm talking to our techie guru people, Kenda, uh, because we, I'm trying to schedule it for a few months so that we can roll them. If you haven't been on some, I think most of the guys will say stuff's really good. If you've been confused by anything we have talked about tonight, then please um, get yourself on one of those online courses because, you know, that is what is going to help you master your driving skills so that you can really make things rock and roll. Anyway, we are bang on 8.30. An hour and a half is what we aim for. And believe it or not, I got it right. So... It's been a pleasure talking to you, as always. Forgive me, I'm feeling kind of sleepy today. It's been a long, old few days, actually. Uh, the next challenge will be out any minute. It has been a pleasure talking to you, as always. Uh, go back and have a look over the progress that, that this group has made as a whole, because I think it's very interesting to see that. Um, you've been pushing your creativity. You've been putting yourselves in uncomfortable places, and you're doing amazing. Be well. Have a great day. If you're in the other side of the world to me, have a great afternoon. If you're kind of caught with the way around there, and have a great evening if you're somewhere in Europe. Be well, take care. Next challenge is coming any minute. Speak to you soon, guys. <laughs>